Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Disco Elysium. Wow, everyone. It has been... How long has it been? 10 or 12 days since I last recorded this game? Oh, Windwater. I think I mentioned several videos ago that I had recorded the part 32 in this game series, and I was quite mistaken. I have recorded only up to part 29, and the last time I recorded this game, today, today is March 3rd, 2020, was February 18th, 2020. So it's been a while since I last recorded the game. Holy crap. When we last left off, I believe I had attempted to solve more of the murdered man, not murdered man, the dead man we found on the boardwalk. We were going to follow up on a few leads there, in particular, call into the library and see if his library card would give us any more information about him. However, the library was closed. They opened at 10 o'clock, so we weren't able to make any more progress there. We had confronted two, looks like thugs, working for a gang called the Skulls, who were investigating the Kimina owned by Kim. And it sounds like they're probably going to go ahead and do some mischievous stuff to the car, but we can't press them on that at the moment. We failed a rather, I think, substantial shiver check. And so we need to do more things so that we can maybe get some more bonuses to the shivers check so that we'll be able to actually pass it because Ruby is probably inside that one structure. In any case, we're back out here on the boardwalk slash beach so we can investigate the church. We also have the people who were investigating the Phasmid we can talk to. And we have some of these other quests to do. My goodness. When I started this game, and I had seen how many things there were to do on Monday, that, that itself was pretty daunting. But look at everything we've managed to do. This has been pretty amazing. Alright, well, let's pick up where we left off, shall we? So, the first thing I think we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our interactable items and see if there's anything here Kim might be able to help us with. Oh, can we show Kim our RCM badge? Let's, let's take a peek. Oh, wait, I, didn't we do this already? I think we did this already. Serial REV126205 GM41. That's just a serial number. Revishal, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Yes, we did. Okay. okay. So I think we did that with him already. I think we did that as well. We examined that. We have a map of Martinez. We don't need that. Okay, yeah, I think we're I think we're good. Let's see if there's any new conversation topics we can have with the washerwoman. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I had a few more questions about Ruby. And actually I don't. All right, goodbye, I'm off. Unless I feel like if, um cutting through all of them and the off chance Kim might say something, I think I'll, I might do that off screen. Since otherwise, a good amount of this video will be me just clicking through everything, seeing if Kim does report anything new. On that note, I still need the helmet and the chest piece for the Merc armor. I wonder where those are. Well, let's go ahead and try to find the church. I think it was up this way. So something I was thinking about, everyone. Something I think... It this game, it'd be neat if, they, if it had it. It doesn't, and of course, there's nothing wrong with it not having what I'm about to suggest, but it would be neat if there was, like, set bonuses in the game. Like, if you wore every single bit of the Fallon outfit, if it would give you a little more of a bonus of some sort. And the same thing with all the Merc gear. 
this game, more than most of them that I've played, seems to really want you to co go out and collect all the pieces for a particular set of set of gear. Now, I haven't not felt that strongly to, about something like this since I used to play um, action RPGs. And I don't... I think the church was more to the east. Ow. Action RPGs. I had put so many hours into Grim Dawn. In fact, if you're new to my channel, like if you've only subscribed recently within the past year, you might not know it, but I used to play the hell out of Grim Dawn on the channel ages ago. I think some of those videos might still be up on my channel, and I think some of them still might be like 15 minutes in length with 480p, some of the original quality, which is to say terrible quality, of the videos I was uploading. When I put the hard disks... Oh, I put the hard disks? When I installed the new disks into my computer, because the old one gave up the ghost, I had forgotten that I did not set Grim Dawn to be using the Steam Cloud save service, and I lost all of the characters. That was some 1,000 hours in that game. Gone. Well, almost. It would have been. It would have been. It turns out I have the characters over on my old computer, but... The last time I used them over there on my four-year-old computer was about two years ago. So I've lost about 300, 400 hours worth of, worth of playtime in the game. But I do still have Diana Toil. In fact, I just, made, I just copied them from that computer over to this one because I was in the mood to play that game again. If we need to have the excuse to play through it and finish that playlist... Hmm. All right. Uh, well, let's get. Let's. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let's go ahead and go in the church. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular, seed-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood. Take a look at that padlock. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. Whoa, what does the sticker say? You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. Kim, have you seen this before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. He looks up, pauses, and replies. No. What's it look like to you? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests... Junior delinquency. Oh, what's it? What is that? For Rebeshaw's ZOC, the moral intern defines junior delinquents as minors between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed an act in violation of the law. These acts aren't called crimes, as they would be for adults. Crimes committed by minors are called delinquent acts. This was part of your officer's exams. He puts the handkerchief in his coat pocket. Hmm. What is suggestive of that? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I am not a youth. Thus, it must be made by youths. Well, we have an interfacing check. If you really think we should get in there, we'll need to find some other way. Oh, I meant to... I, I want to put some other clothes. I didn't want to we would have another conversation. Should we start with that kick drum coming from the ice? Yes, that pulsing bass. He raises his, ear to, his hand to his ear. An indication of junior delinquency. Oh, he's suggesting that the people who are out here recording music might be able to help get, get us in here. Or at least they might know something about the church. Well, first, I have... Oh, I already have plus two interfacing. Oh, our gloves give us plus two interfacing. I don't think that... Do we have some glasses that do the same? Sorry, everyone. I don't remember. I think I've talked before how I wish the game would have something for me to help me know. 
if anything gives me plus interfacing. And or if I'm wearing something which hurts my interfacing. I don't think I am. Okay, let's go ahead and try the white check. Try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. You put this... There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Put the sticker in your ledger. After the last entry, where it belongs. Looks like today was a gold star day. Inspect the staple. The padlock passes through a staple that's been hastily attached to the wood. Closer examination reveals that one of the screws is not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently, and is unprofessional to say the least. Logic. Should you want to get through, it might be easier just for you to pry the whole thing off. Looks like maybe the kids, maybe they actually stopped the church. Maybe maybe they boarded up the church themselves? We can come back here and maybe pry it off later. Inspect the carpentry. The carving of the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. Run your hand over the beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. Rattle the doors. Nothing happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. I don't think that's going to work. Do you think our suspect is hiding inside? He raises his sight to the darkened windows overhead. She might be. It's worth checking out anyway. Lieutenant nods silently. Shivers. High above, the wind wraps the church in its rush. Gold and wet from the ocean bay, its parts around the massive keel-shaped roof, like a test tunnel washing both sides, the way it has done for 340 years. The wind keeps its distance. So should you. What is this feeling? There is a hole in my heart. Then it looks at the padlock. He didn't hear you asking. You were quiet enough. We have the physical instrument, I believe, to easily open that door. You know, we do, don't we? We do. And Sam would probably look to do this rather than go and get permission or ask the kids for help. So let's see if we can do it. Sorry, I wonder why that was highlighted. Oh, we completed a quest. All right, let's give it a go. Actually, wait, wait. Before we do that, do I have any physical instrument stuff that I want to put on? At the very least, do I have any physical instrument stuff that... Okay, I don't have any penalties of physical instrument on me. I don't think I have anything else that gives me plus physical instrument here. In fact, yes, I do not. Nice. You jam the pry bar between the lock and the staple and apply force. Your biceps bulge from the strain. The metal cracks and cr squeals. The pathetic old wood, rusty screws, and one nail stand no chance against the forces of leverage. From deep within, a bellow rips. Hammerdahl, man up from Hammerdahl. Suddenly the pry bar snaps. Metal shavings fly everywhere. The upper half between the lock and staple falls to the ground with a thunk. Look at the broken tool in your hand. The broken edge of the snap pry bar is smooth. Took the tip right off. The fuck? How was this even possible? Tools Blake officer, try to control yourself. It's with the corpse. For example, see how calm I am, although you broke my favorite pry bar. I 
broke the pry bar. Where do I get a new one? I don't know. You don't? Well, maybe we'll find a new one. I don't carry more than one pry bar with me. He looks up at the bell tower. I thought this was a lousy way to enter a place of worship that's already in disrepair. I guess the church agreed. This was surely just a freak accident. Yeah, logic. Sure it was. Alright! Wow! So it looks like we need to talk to the youths about the church then. The church disapproves of me attempting to entering it that way. That's pretty awesome, actually. I like the church resisting. On the off chance there's some par I missed, we'll have this bag equipped. Did we walk Kim out to the spot where the that we ruled out as an assassination? I don't think we did. The girl looks up at you for a moment before turning back to her work. No, I'm not going to push any of these questions. The tent is just a tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Authority. It's safe to assume this is their leader. Or at least he thinks he is. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. It's with the corpse. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watching. He gestures for you to squeeze in. want to see. Where's the child I used to be? I like it. I like it. A bit very old school, though. Let's see. So I'm just going to lower the music a bit. Well, or I'm not. Okay, it's environmental music. I'm going to lower it while we're in here just because I don't want to be too overpowered with my voice. Caster's filled with what appears to be water. The label says distilled. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. A pile of nasal sprays. Brand name, Nozafed Ultra. Egghead. He looks bald in this picture. He doesn't look at all like what he looks like here. A young man with Peroxide blonde hair. Oh, okay, yeah, he does have blonde hair, but here does he doesn't look like he has any hair. Holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, Inland Empire, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secret. Hardcore! Say nothing. Hardcore! Still say nothing. Hard caught as a mega! Alright! Here comes the night! There could have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? Oh, could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? Solve the egghead puzzle. There has to be some way to talk to this person. You just haven't found out found out yet. It's definitely not about the signs. What if you just try again? Find your way out of this maze of things to say? Try one more time. This is hardcore. Hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. 
<laughs> I still say nothing. All core. All right. Yeah. Say nothing. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the stuffy tent. Hot core. Ah. He lets out an agonized roar or the feeblish, obviously not too hardcore beat below. So hardcore. Is it though? He stops dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. It is. But is it? I mean, really. He tilts his head to the other side, like an owl. In an empire, feels like you should reply with the very pinnacle of idiocy here, so that things get totally transcendent. But you haven't gotten there yet, so you don't know what to say. Hmm. I don't know what exactly to say. Under the radar. Over the top. <laughs> Trial and error lock. I like it. You see a youngish man bleaching the tip of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse. Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably endotic music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Ah, oh, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Oh, why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Also for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole! I, I apologise for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. And there's no need. This place is pretty bad. Which brings me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. Volition. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person his age would ever use a word like necromania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histronics. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Oh, that's true. That's very true. Just because uh, people move right in. Dope heads. <laughs> <laughs> I think I love Egghead. Burnouts. He, he angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershol. Strike that, the world! And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there were the worst kind. Rhetoric. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. I won't stand for necromaniacs of any kind. No necromaniacs on my watch. Shake your head gravely. Yes, yes, and the worst part of it is, they're all so spooky. Oh, what do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't heat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tapes without them spooking it up. Places some bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. He turns to you. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing. I'm sure it's not what the, I can't pronounce that, meant f their property for. I'll look into it. Tell me more. All right, man. He claps his head enthusiastically. Empathy. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Did you put the padlock on the door? Yeah, I asked Noy to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in a hurry. Not my best work. It should hold for a while. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long. Like a week, maybe? 
how can you be sure they haven't starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%, maybe 85% they're still alive. Eighty-five percent is not good enough when you're dealing with another person's physical well-being. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I guess it wasn't very hardcore of us just to lock him in there like that. I'll need that key. Of course. No, I give the officer the key. All right. The speed freak dips into his belt pack and produces a yellow key. He then makes a sudden cool fuse move, tossing it in your general direction. Be the cool cop. Try to catch the key as it flies towards you. It's as if time is somehow frozen. You think you can sense the key moving in the air. Yeah, this is going to be way cool. Don't ruin the cool by overdoing it. Raise your hand in front of your face with minimum effort. Blam! Straight in the eye. Straight in the old eye orb. In the looking ball. Pain threshold. Man up! It's nothing. Pick the goddamn key up, put it in your pocket, and move on. With your hand on your eye, pick up the keys. I'm getting too old for this. Where were we? Noid. My bad. Empathy. He looks like he's genuinely sorry he didn't throw them better. Be careful there, there officer. And tell us how it goes, yeah? We'll be here. Let's, let's go do this now. And then we'll talk to these guys more about other things. I had I had to make the attempt to catch it. It's just it's just well, I had to. Oh, and we have that key, right? Oh, I guess I do. It's not in my inventory. It's it's a bit weird. Sometimes items go in my inventories, like like keys, and then sometimes they don't. So I don't I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's making that determination. Oops, sorry about that. We actually jogged a little bit. I can't believe our crowbar broke on the on the door. That looked like that should have been pretty easy to open, too. Or at least, I got the impression it was, based on the text. Maybe I misunderstood something. Although I got the feeling we would need a new crowbar anyway, right? We still have those papers by the bear. The ice, the ice fridge bear. That requires a better crowbar than the one we, we had. Okay, let's open the padlock with the key. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle open, pops open. Shivers. Feels like electricity. And a very small piece of nothingness. Let's go. Lieutenant nods at you. Pull on the doors. Inland Empire. As you do... You hear and echo of the doomed commercial area, its black halls and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. Oh, maybe we we did have Inland Empire and or Shivers point out to us that the doomed commercial area's curse comes from this structure. That was several videos ago. Hmm. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here. Not run. Well, I walk everywhere anyway, so this would make sense for me. Though I can't apparently walk anywhere at the moment. Oh, there we go. Yes? This grotesque wooden figure looks half-finished. Feels like it's trying to become one with the church.
More the forked lightning pattern you saw outside. Lightning pattern, sorry. Oh yeah, some of the pillars are carved. Oh, I see, I see it now. This is the person's uh, butt. Here's a leg. Their arms are up here. Here's their head. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. Perception, hearing. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand just in the right spot, even your footprints would be completely silent. Wait. I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. Logic. It seems that sound here is detached from its source somehow. If not blotted out outright, truly unusual. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Yell as loud as you can. Your voice is barely audible, not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Half-Light, it's unnerving. Kim, what's happening? Then points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Can't hear shit. I wonder why the, the church was built with such strange acoustics. <laughs> Empathy. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. It's probably nothing. Just our imagination. Maybe. Darkness often has that effect on people. Look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible. Then disappear completely into the darkness of the tower overhead. I'm not wearing my... I'm wearing stuff that lowers my perception. What if I don't want to know what's up there? The silence, the darkness... They've enveloped you as in a cocoon. You cannot move anymore. <laughs> Volition, relax. It'll be okay. Just darkness without end. It makes your head spin. Spin. Blink. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it? Is that a ban? Looks more like part of the carpentry of the building came alive and is now studying you intently. Hey, who's there? The man leans forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. I bet your alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be alright. You've come to the right place. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. 
And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Inspector Corpse. I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the tenant's own view of reality. Dr. Chemistry. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. I'm a policeman, and they need to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about alcohol use. Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, eh? I can smell the control all the way over here. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. I know it's hard to admit you got a problem. I was like you once. Couldn't take an honest look into my own heart and see I was in pain. We haven't had any alcohol for like four days. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. We haven't had any alcohol for four days, Kim. <laughs> Volition. If the lieutenant agrees, then maybe, just maybe, you should pay attention. Dr. Chemistry, look at these crazies. What is this? A fucking intervention? Horrific necktie. Fuck you, crab man. You don't tell us what to do. Tell them. This is a bit weird because we haven't had anything to drink. We have had no alcohol for... Three entire days, and we're almost halfway through the fourth. I do not intend to drink any alcohol with our character. We've had smokes. We've had smokes, but that's not alcohol. We are actually trying to get past our alcohol uh, problems. So, four is how I would normally respond, given the kept character we're playing. However, however... I said early on that I would do whatever Volition said for us to do. Volition wants us to listen. We'll listen. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust them all. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the Mother of Silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. Inland Empire, this Mother of Silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. Where did you come from? He smiles strangely and turns his head up to look into the darkness of the church tower. Up there, Holmes. There must be something illegal about living in a church ceiling. I don't know what yet, but there must be. Oh, man. I'd love to see that statute. He pauses to think. I'm sure I'd be trespassing if the church was in use. But it's not, hombre. I've done my share of illegal shit. Used to be in a gang, the whole deal. But even memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. I lost my memory too. But I like it. It's like I get to create a whole new me. Start again from scratch. He frowns. That's not really the point, Essa. You gotta give yourself over to service. The service of the mother, that is. Do you remember your name, sir? <coughs> The lieutenant is not particularly interested in this information. He's just trying to assert some control over the conversation. Thank you, Authority. Tiago is my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place among your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore.
My name's Harry Dubois, and my place in the world is Lieutenant Double Yefreator. That's just a thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He sounds melancholy. He sounds melancholy saying this. His limbs a mere shadow below the ceiling. Well, what are you doing here, Tego? This is a special place. There is a preparation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. He nods towards the ceiling. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be pure enough to go drink from it directly. What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated but not destroyed. Finally, at one with the state of the world before reality began. Is the pale in here? Is he talking about a bit of the pale? Who's this mother of sleep you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, Esse. She is one who can't be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. Are you sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Let's agree to disagree. I know it'll take time. Don't sweat it. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I'm a Saraf, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Doesn't make sense for you to sing if she's a mother of silence. <laughs> I don't mean the literal singing, Holmes. This is the mother of silence we're talking about. It's the singing of a burning heart. You may be thinking, but fire crackles. No, Holmes. That's the material burning. The flames themselves are without sound. Is that true? Hmm. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, eh? It didn't belong to me. Right. Other questions. The so many figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really, or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. And that's what's so great about mother. It lets you forget about everything. Yes, this must be the pale. He must have touched it. Some rave, or he's being around it long enough. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? I seen them. Think they're scared of me. So what do you think? About the nightclub, that is. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there in Bibbling. I ain't got no music on earth that can reach where I go. Oh, ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might it be nice to have some company. Empathy. He said that in spite of himself, he's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Do you know where the other spooker is? Pointed the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh, essay vegetal moi estu I can't, uh, He laughs. I messed that word up. Don't know, Holmes. Don't know, Holmes. Wait. 
Alright, thanks. I'll see if I can find her some other way. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... He shrugs. Okay, then. Thanks. Gotta admit, that's pretty creepy. I, I do like him in the shadows up here on the rafters. A cracked pane of glass. Colorful. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. Mesquite Banger's Silk Scarf. Plus one pain threshold. Bangers don't cry. This huge red scarf is still dusty from lying in the church. A subtle red on red in board dream embellishes it with cocky roosters and mesquite floral motives. All I see is an orange scarf here. down one Inland Empire. I don't really want to be down a point. Especially not of Inland Empire, not in this place. So we'll leave our horrific necktie on at the moment. That's interesting. These look like podiums. All of them. Oh! This must, that must have been where the choir was singing. Would be my guess. With the, with the hymnals uh, open to them. A spider has spun its web around this wood-carved pillar. What am I wearing, by the way? Do I want any minus perception? Ooh, some new shoes. Not like, but I like my current shoes, of course. Mesquite Bangers Red Brogues. Plus one empathy. In someone else's shoes. These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white on white flower motif sewn in the tongue. The toe caps are still dusty from lying in the church. How do they look on us? They look pretty good. But I do like the way this entire outfit looks, so we're going to keep our current ones on us. $1.50. We'll take them cash. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery. It makes your skin crawl. Mainframe. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. It seems like we should be able to put that cube into this. The computer system. Another radio computer, says the lieutenant, stepping closer. And this time, it's act already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. It's pretty corpse. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. Kim. We should probably let it be. It's becoming clear that there's no trace of the suspect anywhere inside the church. Yeah, but this machine looks just like the one in the doomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework. Careful not to touch anything. You're right. Let's get out of here. We're not a computer guy. Or Sam is not, at least. We can always come back to it later if we want. Someone's siphoning electronic current from outside into this antenna. A portable Harman Walshie tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tapes spinning on empty. 
we can walk back there. I don't see why we wouldn't. We've explored everything else in the church? I think we have. Oh, this is stained glass window only. In white, silver, and apricot, I can't pronounce that, the young mother of hum humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad, a dark and radiant majesty. Encyclopedia. This is her innocence Dolores die. Or day? I think that's die. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Sam wasn't religious, and I don't think he would kneel in this situation. No. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. As if under a microscope. Look up. The woman looks down at you standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There's a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? I don't know anything about the religion, so this is she'll be what we want her to be. It's compassion. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to sh shoulder. Do the same. It's the only option we have. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. This is Dolores Die. Yes. He looks around. I wasn't sure before, but this must be the Dolarian Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. Oh, you knew of this place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachal's founding, 300 years ago, by first-generation settlers. Oh, what else do you know, Kim? There used to be... Seven stave churches on the coast. The Sept Sorers, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution, or used for building materials. We should be respectful here. Although the building appears to be deserted, I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps. He looks at the machinery lying around. Empathy. A pang of guilt. The lieutenant is leaving something else out. Do you know why it was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shot to pieces. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can't be sure. You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I don't remember being here. I'm pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I tried to pry into extra district matters. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's unimportant to your business in Martinez now. Do we have any plus encyclopedia? Let's see. Do, at least so far. Anything else? 
because I apparently can figure out it was the Church of Humanism, and how did I know that? Maybe I read about it, but maybe we were here. I'm not wearing, am I wearing anything that takes away Encyclopedia? Nope, okay, so. Let's try this check. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Die, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state, perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. Okay, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this isola, the Inzaludian, by explorers from the continent of Mundi, she is, among other things, the innocence of intersolitary travel and the connected world. So this means what? This means that she represents the people who do, are unaware that the Pale exists and that past the Pale there are other places. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential, I can't pronounce that, Marchesse, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene la Navigator, Queen of Surlins, modern day Surles Clef. Also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Inland Empire, draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under her long, slender form like this, dwarfed. Horrific necktie. Yeah, big bummer. Boring history. Gotta keep it light, man. Keep it moving. Get fucked up instead. Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A similar grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost pre preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigator sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new world, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history, the Dolaran Era. Wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. What exactly is an innocence? The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. And innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precinct that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate innocentric rule, should it coincide with our time. And innocence is infallible. The decisions made by ones are not decisions. They are inevit inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway, only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. 
and innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Is one in office now? No. We are alone. Was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your somatic memory, or what remains of it. But, Inland Empire, terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. No, there was something bad about her. I want to know. You already do. Although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Dye. Constantly surrounded by her theriers, she was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaign she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. What happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from the innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Megalit were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Dye often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb, an icon such as this. In, she was also blonde, the blondest woman you've ever seen, with green eyes, the color of Pisantic Mar Interginum. Little was known of her Martius husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Dye to court. In conclusion, Yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. Lieutenant Dierfurter, you stood there for over five minutes. Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? What would Sam say? War criminal? No. She's beautiful? No, I don't think so. Two? Or three? Glowing lungs. That's fucked up. Yes, glowing lungs are quite unusual. After that one time, they have not been reported to glow. He takes his glasses off to clean them. You know, this church, the coast, we shouldn't linger. Finish what you came here to do and let's move on. This isn't a good place to get lost in. First, though, we'll also try that visual calculus, and I think I've got gloves for those. Oh, I have gloves that penalize us for them. Oh, I do have plus one visual calculus gloves. I have anything else visual calculus? Not here. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to do it. We need a 12 for this. We don't have too many points in it either. Okay, let's try this. Reconstruct the cracked glass. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text, a... Liet Motev below them both. 
the motto? What does it say? Below both women, illuminous black letter. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort. La vie de nouveau. I am murdering that because I am an uncouth, uneducated American who cannot speak any other language other than English. I do like the image here of this person. What is he holding, I wonder? And then along the left side, Après le monde, la graisse. Après la graisse, le monde de nouveau. I'm mispronouncing that last word and I know I am. Lieutenant, this used to say afterlife, death, after death, life again, he nods. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in DeLorean sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated into the RCM slogan. No more, however. Oh, why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral interrelated motto. We are already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as a too feminine. It was a macho thing. It would be correct in this world's case, though, wouldn't it? After this isola ends, you have the pale. And after the pale, you have another world. What is the RCM model now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. <laughs> well, we're not going with number four. That That's for sure. Sam wouldn't say anything like that. I think cool would be correct. I personally like the other one better, but eh, cool. Ice cool, Lieutenant nods. What shattered this mos- oh, actually, let's go in opposite order. Who is the older woman? The Estention on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing a thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden, I can't pronounce that, in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence die advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, farriers, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. What shattered this? Unknown. Logic. Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned? Or just hooligans looking for something to break? <laughs> Wasteland of reality. It's been brought to your attention that you're an alcoholic. And that's a sickness. And it's killing you. You're crawling on your knees through life. Your booze-filled belly dragging on the ground. Your brain now fuzzy. Now in overdrive. Your hairs are together with today's cold sweat and yesterday's vomit. Perhaps they're right. Anything is better than this. Even bone-dry reality itself. Maybe you can quit. Ah. Would I... Mine is too physical instrument. I don't know if I want... I don't know. That's going to be an expensive thought to take. Because I'm going to want to... Well, granted, this is only for research. I have a hunch that the permanent research is going to be minus one physical instrument. And my, I wanted my points to go into some more thoughts up here and or, you know, I... I had plans to put points in other other places, not more physical instrument, but I guess I could put... 
That's gonna be two levels? I don't know if we've got the experience points to level that many times anymore. Wait, that's not fair. I don't think it's fair. Okay, where's my the corpse shivers, the corpse visual calculus? Oh, where's my do I have plus drama goggles? I don't think uh, gloves? Oh gloves. Glasses, there we go. I don't think I do. Uh, we'll go with this at the moment. Okay. Also, we've been playing for just about an hour, I think. So I think we'll have to stop here. I suppose let's do a quick. Actually, I should put this on. We'll do a quick search of this place for tar, tear, tear, tar. I wonder if we had passed that perception check, if we would have actually seen the pale up there. I'm also surprised we didn't get a bonus for actually having the flashlight in our hand. It came from the stained glass window. Still has letters on it, too. What does? What does? We have a certain level of... Oh, something that we didn't have before. Hey, there was a single bottle out here. Ten cents. Ten cents. So was that all that we had to do here? We're missing a person, aren't we? Whoever that the other spooker is. We didn't see her, apparently, in here. Hmm. Well, we should still stop here. So... I'm not sure what we should do next. We still have the... Oh, crap! It's 11 o'clock as well in-game. So I guess we should... what we'll do for the next episode is we'll double back to the car and we'll... we'll call the library about the dead man. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you all for watching this one. And take care, everyone.